All right, so since everybody and their mom was telling me that I can't talk about the Beacon Studio and call it crap or the Beacon ecosystem and call it crap, I went ahead and bought the Beacon suite of stuff for product reviews this week. And I am also gonna be reviewing this microphone again. I have the black version of it and I did a review on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do an updated thing or wherever and talk about it or wherever and look at it from the white perspective as far as the microphone goes, because IX Tech was kind enough to send it out and I'm gonna be taking a look at other products as well. So during my month of buying products for reviews and having company stuff send stuff out, I said, why not spend a little bit more and get the Beacon suite of things because I have money to blow, but I don't think it was a smart choice. And I keep trying to tell people that these products are overpriced or wherever. And people keep on saying that I'm lying. I have no room to talk since I don't have the products and stuff. Well, I've had them for about 40 hours now, and I've already made one tweet about the Beacon mic. I'll get to that in a second, but I will go ahead and tell you guys my thoughts and opinions again for having about 40 hours. And I'll probably do an update video in about three months or something like that to really give my chance, uh, me a chance to, uh, fiddle around with it and get a little bit more accustomed to this ecosystem moving away from elgato and their wavelength and stuff um so let's go ahead and jump right into it the beacon mic this is my impressions and this is what i tweeted out so for those who don't know i am a product reviewer on youtube i purchase products for reviews as well as have companies send out products and i went ahead and went overboard with getting products this month because i've been having audio issues with my old setup so i wanted to go with the beacon ecosystem because so many people have been praising it for so long so i decided to pick up the beacon mic the beacon mix crate and the beacon studio the beacon studio hasn't not showed up yet but i do have the beacon mix crate but i haven't opened it because i started filming unboxings and one of the unboxings that i did was the beacon mic and the beacon mic came with a lot of problems and issues and this is completely unacceptable and i was going to end up doing product reviews and stuff like of their stuff but you can see right here like there's a whole bunch of scratches around the usb port uh the same type of scratches are right here on the actual microphone like stand or whatever that's going to clamp to the actual microphone boom arm um I'm really scared to touch this. I'm gonna have to desensitize like my hands and stuff because I, I have a, a almost two year old at home. But like I said, like you can probably can't really tell it on camera, but there's like little hairs everywhere. And this plastic part or whatever is probably fraying and that's probably what these hairs are. But like I said, I can see it in person. You probably can't see it, but there's like a hair right here. There's either pet hair or human hair. And I don't have cats. I don't have dogs. I rent. I can't have that kind of stuff. But like, it's not even safe for me to really to handle this stuff because I don't know how my son is going to react. I don't know yet if he's allergic to this stuff, but you can probably barely see it in here. Like there's hair stuff here. Like, like I want to, I want to scream and yell because again, $279 for this. So as someone that knows that Amazon returns are there and I could possibly exchange this microphone or wherever, or just get a refund that takes a lot to do when I'm where I live at or wherever it's a whole process. And for, to just getting a refund, that's gonna take even longer to get that money back. And if I wanted to get a brand new one in exchange for this one, the chances are I could run into the same issue. And the Beacon Mix, it looks like it's not gonna have that issue because the box is still sealed the way it's supposed to be. And the Beacon Studio is a brand new product, so I doubt I'm gonna run into that issue. But for $279, I'm, I'm so angry, I can't tell you. I'm like, what the? F so like I said in the video, $279 that's not acceptable to have that issue it was an open box thing I did not buy this refurbished off their website I did not buy it furbished on Amazon I bought a brand new one and it should have came in again for $279 this is unacceptable the beacon mic should not cost $279 the beacon mic at most should probably be around 160 but honestly if I was going to tell you my honest opinion and how I feel from build quality to what it can do all that stuff my guess was right around 150 dollars um i think it's on par as far as the build quality and everything like that with like the sure mv7x or something like that maybe in the road pod mic or something i just would not suggest getting the beacon mic honestly in my personal opinion i would suggest getting another dynamic microphone i've tried it with the beacon studio with this microphone the fine fine k688 as well as the sure mv7 and x or wherever and i think those microphones probably more so the sure mv7x as well as like maybe a rode pod mic any microphone that's going to be around 
around $100 to $200 is going to be a good, I would say, partner to the Beacon Studio as far as mic quality and stuff goes, because you're going to want a dynamic microphone and you're going to want one that's built good enough that's going to have the off axis rejection and background noise removal and all that stuff built into the microphone and being a true dynamic microphone. Because in my personal opinion, the Beacon mic is not a true dynamic microphone. And I think it's because it's a USB microphone and not an XLR microphone. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of videos that you're seeing, either people are deep throating the mic, like their lips are touching the top of the mic, which some people don't like to do. I don't like, I like, you know, having some distance. This is a reasonable, I would say acceptable distance for me from the microphone. I feel like with the Beacon microphone, I have to deep throat the mic or literally be making out with it in order for it to really get across the noise rejection or whatever, even with the software and its capabilities. Another thing is, is that the Beacon mic, at least the white version is really easy to scuff. And I think it's apparent when you look at the scuffs and stuff that was on the one that I got, you probably can't really tell on camera or wherever, cause I don't have like a micro lens, but I'm telling you visibly there's scratches, there's scuffs everywhere or wherever. And I'm not sure how long that person had the microphone or why they turned it back. Uh, another thing is, is listening and monitoring into the microphone uh, through the headphone port. Cause I did try that. Cause people were saying that was one of the best ways to do it and do it through the software and stuff to me. It sounded way too tinny. It wasn't a actual realistic representation of the audio quality that I was getting because once I recorded my settings or wherever, I saved my settings and recorded a video in OBS and played back the video to see if it was just me or something like that, the video sounded fine. But when I was actively listening into the microphone through the microphone and not through a wireless headset, I was hearing something completely different. It sounded tinny, it sounded really noisy. It, it sounded really, really bad in my personal opinion. And then, like I said, I recorded it, listened to the video, wherever, even monitoring it with other headphones that wasn't plugged straight into the port sounded perfectly fine. It might have been the headphones I was using. I wasn't using anything that was professional as far as wired goes, but still is if not having an actual like act, actual active like representation of what you're producing to your stream or YouTube videos can probably trip you up and you're probably not going to find the cause of it. And again, it might just be because my microphone was used or something like that. I'll give it that. But overall, even going into the software, even with listening back with the headphones and having an actual accurate representation of my audio and using like these headphones or another he pair of headsets or wherever, I was noticing with the noise suppression as well as the other settings that you can have in the software, the software is very intuitive. It has tool tips and stuff and explains for, you know, people who are just, who don't know, you know what I'm saying? They don't know what they're doing or anything like that. I think it's a very good uh, hand holding you and explaining things, uh, think thoroughly enough for you to get at least a little bit of modicum of a gist of what you, what to do or wherever on each setting of the page. I think that's a really good thing. Another thing is, is that what's on offer and what they picked and choose or wherever is really good up until when you start to realize that the beacon mic like i said is not a true dynamic microphone and the reason why i keep on doing air quotes is because there's going to be people out there saying it is it rejects noise what you're talking about all this stuff i have a portable ac unit window ac unit or wherever in my office as well as the wooting 60 he as my keyboard and the wooting 60 he all i did was switch out the keycaps i didn't do anything else so it has switches wherever there are known to be i don't want to say high pitch but they're all known to be a little bit loud in person but i have never the whole time i've had to be uh the wave xlr from elgato with the wavelength software using vsts and what i use is background noise removal because back then i used to have a desk fan and that would be picked up into my microphone but with that background noise removal from elgato which is very similar if not the same as the nvidia broadcast uh background noise removal I, my fan would never get picked up. My keyboard would never get picked up. My window AC unit, when I got it later on, cause I just recently got it, never got picked up at all. No matter what XLR microphone I was using from cheap all the way up to the, the most expensive one I got is the Shure MV7X. None of the microphones all the way down to, I think about $50 for a microphone all the way up to the Shure MV7X, which is like 160 now, wherever it's constantly on sale, it's supposed to be 200 and something, but I've constantly seen it on sale for like 150, 160. Um, and that's when I purchased it or wherever. And I've had it for, I'd say about two years, a year or so. Um, and like I said, none of that stuff gets picked up into those microphones. Um, they do get picked up when I have the background noise removal off. 
but that is a VST or a plugin that you need to be able to put through the Wavelink software. Unfortunately, with the Beacon software, regardless of the Beacon Studio or the Beacon Mic, you cannot add third-party VSTs or whatever. They do not allow that. I understand making their own would probably take up resources and stuff as far as you know what they already have on offer and the time they're taking to tweak and make it perfect or whatever what they have but just allowing people to put the third-party plugins like the wavelength software and agata does is something that they need to look into and get just do it just fucking do it um because the noise suppression and the exciter and as far as well let's talk about the top of the app um as far as if you ever seen the app or wherever the eq curves and like all the settings and stuff and no eq which i'm running on the beacon studio right now on this microphone because i don't like their presets for this microphone but at the top of wherever the, all those stuff or wherever is rudimentary is very well explained and stuff like that i think a lot of people will be fine with the presets that they have depending on the type of microphone they have and it's good you're just going to play it by ear and like i said the little tool tips if you click the little question marks on the app or wherever when you get the product or wherever you'll see it and um it's going to explain stuff to you but at the bottom when we're talking about the noise suppression and the expander the noise suppression is really cool because you could take a snapshot of your ambient noise and they tell you to type they tell you to have ac going all that stuff and that's fine but depending on the amount of noise suppression you add after you take that snapshot and, and coupled with the expander and like drawing up the db and, and pulling it down or wherever it can be really harsh and cutting you off especially on the beacon mic um somewhat on the beacon studio but is a, a little bit more forgiving because again you're bringing your own microphone in and they're actually true dynamic microphones but with the beacon mic if you turn that thing up or wherever you can't there's no way for me to get rid of the noise of my keyboard and my keyboard is right there next to my microphone and the ac unit wherever can get cut out but my keyboard again it's not a click clacky keyboard or wherever it's not high ping and stuff like that it is in a plastic housing and again the switches and stuff you can listen to a sound test of the booting 60 he it's not going to be accurate as most people think it is or wherever when it comes to keyboard testing because you have to be there in person it's hard to translate that audio into a recording into a microphone and then upload into youtube and then youtube does whatever it does to the audio anyways so but it's not one of the loudest keyboards out there. But the Beacon microphone is acting like it's one of the loudest keyboards out there. And when I'm talking or wherever and I'm typing or I'm playing a video game or something like that, I don't want my keyboard noises to be transferred over to Discord or my live streams or even a recording because that can be distracting. And nobody really wants to hear that shit when you're playing a competitive game shooter or wherever and you need communication and stuff like that and you having an open mic and you're you know i'm saying there's nothing you can do about it and even though you can get closer to the beacon mic and pretty much have your lips touch the tip of the mic you can still somewhat hear the keyboard in the background and that's a problem to me but it's something that i'm just gonna have to deal with at this point because again i don't want to use the wave xlr or the elgato software or wherever at all because it's buggy but i've had the beacon software and 20 and 48 hours already crash on me about the number of 10 times i've had it non-responding or wherever to me and had to restart my computer three times that is not acceptable for all these devices being 200 to, to 200 plus uh, that's why I think, like I said before, the Beacon Mix needs to be around a $50 to maybe $60. The Beacon Mix Create needs to be around $100. The Beacon Studio needs to be around $120, maybe $140. And the Beacon Mic needs to be around $150, no more than $160. Because these devices, they all feel cheap. They, they all do. Uh, other than the Beacon Mic, it feels a little bit more premium. But due to the scratching and all that stuff or whatever that can occur... I, I don't think any of these are justified in their prices, to be honest. Um, just looking at them visually, yes, they look appealing. They look good in setup uh, videos. They look good in setup pictures. They, they're going to look visually good and decent or whatever. But once you touch them and you hold them and everything, especially the Beacon Studio, like I kept saying, it's reminds me of the Fine Fine SC3. And this thing is about 50, 60 bucks. It's as light as it, if not a little bit heavier than the Beacon Studio. And the feel of it or wherever, it, it, it feels like a cheap device it, it really does um and that's one of one of the problems is when you're paying 200 plus for devices they should not feel cheap and it's like well you're getting access to the software but like i said the software doesn't allow you to add even more vsts because their background like i said noise suppression and all that stuff 
even with a really good XLR microphone, not this one, but the Shure MV7X, the, I would say the bare minimum for pro level audio, as people want to say, or something like that, uh, entry level audio, whatever, even at this distance and my, I would say AC unit is like two arms length away, it still picks up with the noise suppression and like i said if you crank up that noise suppression if you crank up that amount and stuff like that like they tell you to do with the expander and all that stuff you can still hear the noise and for whatever reason it distorts your audio to where it's just not really usable at all and i'll play a clip that i tried to record earlier with my ac unit going or wherever and just you know was using the beacon studio because i thought it was going to be good enough but the audio sounds horrendous all right, so we're going to go ahead and test this microphone with the Beacon Studio to see if this video is going to be good and if it's going to be easy to do. I am not entirely sure. We're just going to go ahead and have to uh, facing and doing all the software and all that stuff, as well as I've already tried the K688 from Fine Fine, as well as the Shure MV7X. And I find that the Beacon Studio the Beacon Mix Create and the Beacon Microphone. And again, it could be just because of the microphone that I'm using. It's not the more professional microphone, but it shouldn't be that much day and night shift or whatever. And again, it's the same settings that you're listening to right now, the same amount of background suppression, like everything is the same. And for those who are saying that I'm setting stuff up in the software wrong or something like that, I've had military experience with not only civilian software, but military software, military components, as well as civilian components. I've had experiences being in theater or on deployment or being stationed and, and you know, stateside. And I've been able to set up numerous accounts, numerous of uh, software and computers and stuff like that, cloning hard drives, setting up the components inside a PC or wherever, setting up people's accounts, the, uh, the server, setting up printers and stuff like that, networking, running Cat5 cables, Cat6 cables. Like I was a 25 Bravo information technology specialist. Any Many MOS in the military knows you don't really do your job that you're supposed to do. So I was doing every 25 series job or wherever in the military both like I said deployed as well as stateside I have years of experience doing that years of experience doing it in the civilian world as well as having some college ed education and on top of that being a content creator and using numerous companies products and software or wherever all across the board from budget to somewhat more expensive you know what I'm saying so I know what my way around software I'm not the best at EQing audio or wherever as far as like EQing from a lavalier system or something that's not wired or something like that but when it comes to wired stuff or whatever, XLR stuff and, and tweaking stuff and trying to get my voice because my voice is hard to EQ to because I have a deeper voice and everybody keeps telling me that I have too much bass added to my videos in the beginning of my videos. And that's because I have a deep voice. So I had to learn to cut that out because I never had a problem with it and nobody's ever told me it was a problem until I started uploading to the internet because it's the fucking internet and everybody wants to tell you how to be a content creator, but you can't be the type of content creator you want to be yourself you have to be like everybody else and that's another rant for another day and i'm just here to tell you guys that the beacon mic is a no-go i would not tell anybody to get it or wherever at all They're just based on the noise suppression and the expander itself i think you will get more out of the software and the capability of it if you get the beacon studio and unfortunately it is too expensive for both items but at least the beacon studio is less expensive but then you have to get a decent quality mic that's going to be a hundred and something dollars so you know what i'm saying it's it is what it is pick your poison kind of thing but don't think that you're going to get the beacon mic and it's going to be a actual dynamic microphone and i know there's going to be people in the comments like i said before who are going to sit there and tell me that i did it wrong i don't know what i'm talking about it's perfect it's perfect for them but they never ran into issues it's probably because i got it used or whatever they, they're going to come up with some excuses or whatever look like i keep telling people your experience depending on whatever it is if it's good bad or whatever it's your experience i'm not knocking your experience i'm not saying that you're not having a wonderful time with any of these products from any company period all i can talk about is my experience my thoughts and my opinion and put actual truth to what i am saying and I have experienced it. I have multiple videos that I've tried to record while setting this stuff up and talking about it and everything. But if I was sitting here putting all of it into one video, it would be like a five hour video and nobody's gonna sit there and watch that. Let's just be honest. So what I will say is that 
The microphone, if you have a particular voice, is probably going to be good. If you are okay with the noise suppression and the expander being a little bit harsh in your controlled environment as far as turning off stuff or wherever after you took the snippet or the snapshot of having everything on and then you turn it off, it's going to work well for you for the Beacon mic or the Beacon Studio. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people out there who are going to get these products who don't have sound treated room they don't have sound blankets they don't have sound panels whatever it is they're going to be in super echoey rooms or something like that or just a, na a natural sound i would say from my bedroom and they're going to run into the issue that they wish they actually had a real xlr dynamic microphone because it's going to be better as far as sound quality goes there's nothing wrong with saying that you know what i'm saying again there's going to be people who get the microphone and find the sound of it and sound uh of their experience or wherever with the noise suppression and because people keep talking about the noise suppression is so good the expander is so good what they have built into the software is good but my experience between the wave xlr and having the background noise removal and the beacon mic and the noise suppression and expander the the background noise removal is way better a hundred times better in my experience so now what you're going to say, you're going to say that my experience was flawed somehow because people were telling me that I couldn't say anything because I didn't have the products. Now I have the products. I guarantee you keyboard warriors already typing. Let's move on to the Beacon Studio. The Beacon Studio, like I said, feels cheap, feels really plasticky, shouldn't be as, as high as it is. It's going to be really good for people who want the two PC setup, obviously um, doing the processing and all this stuff on the actual device itself, just like the Beacon mic. So you don't have to have the software open another good plus or wherever having all the capabilities and everything that the beacon mic can do this is the way that you should beacon if you beacon or wherever um again i think the lack of not having vsts though is a big you know con or wherever to me personally in my use case scenario that's not going to apply to everybody but i would have liked to see that but again you can negate that somewhat of having a good proper microphone but again you shouldn't have to do that it's just okay uh the, but yeah the beacon studio wherever it's a it's a decent device it's small compact it's going to look nice on your desk or wherever i really wish it had two xlr uh microphones i tried to do a overhead microphone or wherever but because of the noise suppression and how the expander works and stuff if you're looking to get it for that use case scenario I would say either you're gonna have to drop that suppression and that uh, expander really low to really get the fullness of your voice so it won't harshly cut off because you're not gonna be as close to the microphone. And you're gonna have to put up some kind of sound panels, blankets or something like that, sound treat your room, or you're gonna have a whole bunch of echoeyness or whatever in your room. And I don't have that issue when I use, again, the Wavelink software. And I even had it plugged into the Fine Fine SC3 and I'll play a clip or wherever. But again, background noise removal, a slight EQ, and this little $50 interface or wherever gave me this sound. All right, so future editing is good here. I forgot to go ahead and say this. This is not going to pertain to every single content creator out there or wherever. It should just be common sense. But unfortunately, it's the internet. People are going to have a problem or issue with what I'm saying. Mic testing, one, two, three. Mic testing, one, two, three. Testing the mic for the overhead rig. And I'm testing it, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yo, this is how it goes. I don't know, but we'll see. And again, that's an overhead microphone. I know it's not the purpose or wherever, that's fine. But you see the benefits of having, you know what I'm saying, that noise, that uh, background noise removal. It's way better than the suppression and the exp expander, at least in my personal opinion. Um, so I can see somebody getting the Beacon Studio, being happy with it or whatever, being fine with it, especially having those extra stuff for two PC setups or wherever, as well as bringing your own microphone or wherever, you're gonna have a good, decent time. But again, you probably are gonna have to watch this expander and the noise suppression just a little bit, but not as much as the Beacon microphone. I would not recommend the Beacon microphone. Next up, we have the Beacon Mix Create. The Beacon Mix Create is actually the thing that surprised me the most as far as the functionality of it within the software and how easy it was to route the stuff or wherever and switch the, the things or wherever. But the problem with this, the Beacon Mix Create, is that I kept saving how I wanted my routing table and how to display on the Beacon Mix. I kept saving it. And every time the actual software or wherever would crash or I had to restart my computer, all that stuff, it would reset the, the layout of 
the actual uh, screen or display. And what I had to do, end up doing or wherever, is deleting all the other profiles, well, duplicating one, deleting all of the profiles, changing some stuff around in there, kept clicking the save button or wherever, and then I forced close the app or wherever, and it asked me, did I want to save or discard my settings? And it's like, I've already clicked save like 300 times. So I saved it and then I opened it back up and now it's all displaying correctly. I shouldn't have to do that, but I had to do that. So just keep that in mind as well. But again, once you have it all displayed, it's perfectly fine. Um, the only caveat is that the window, and I'll show an example wherever on screen of something that I tried to record or wherever, but it didn't work out, but shrinking the window and expanding it or wherever, the UI, whoever came with it, is fucking stupid. Um, it shouldn't get that small. It becomes really unreadable really quick, especially if you have a bigger TV or screen or something like that. Um, it's not resizing correctly, in my personal opinion. The only really usable, I would say, option for it is having it full screened. And obviously, that's not something that you want to do. But luckily, like I said, you can close the software, unlike the Wave XLR and its Wavelink software. Another thing is, is that if you use the Beacon Studio and the Beacon Mic like I do, right now it's perfectly fine because this is a true dynamic microphone. You might be seeing me a little bit on the Beacon Studio, I don't know, or the Beacon Mic or whatever, I don't know if it's picking up in the background, hopefully it's not because it's far enough away, but you can't mute the, you can't mute the Beacon Studio and the Beacon Mic separately. If you hit the button on the Beacon Studio, it mutes the Beacon Studio and the Beacon Mic because the mic tab inside the software is all connected. So once you mute your microphone, it's going to mute everything or wherever in underneath that tab through the Beacon Mix Create. So I would like to mute this microphone. So what I have to do is unplug the, the XLR cable wherever and go over there, stream, record over there, do whatever I'm doing over there. And when it's time for me to come over here, I have to either unplug the Beacon Mic or click that little green box or wherever under the mic tap. Like I shouldn't have to do that. I should be able to integrate it into the Stream Deck software and make a hotkey. Can't do that either. I don't think there's any way to make even a Windows configuration to mute the Beacon Studio or the Beacon Mic or wherever separately and then use that configuration or wherever through the Windows little uh, add-on or wherever and the Stream Deck software. From what I know, Beacon doesn't want to integrate with Stream Deck or Elgato or act like anybody they're trying to be apple and they're not apple they don't care they're trying to be in their own little world and do their own little thing and it's starting to show that they're not doing it properly with no vst support or wherever from third party um not adding correctly some more vsts like background noise removal not suppression um like how you have with the nvidia broadcast as well as the uh, elgato wavelink and stuff like that that's way better in my personal opinion but some people might like the way they're doing the noise suppression. Again, that's personal. That comes down to personal preference and taste. But having the options, that's that's what that's what content creators need as far as when it comes to these audio selections is having options to be able to control how they do their content. Because again, these are tools to allow them to do it. So give me the right tools to allow me to do it. You know what I'm saying? So again, overall, the that I think the Beacon Mix Create is good. If you could get the Create for $150 or $100 somehow, I think for most people who are routing their audio wherever and want to control their audio is good. But just know getting the Beacon Mic and the Beacon Studio, some people are gonna say it's obvious, but getting both and trying to do like a separate setup or like whatever I'm doing, it's probably not the way, but I don't really see another microphone out there that's potentially doing what Beacon is doing or whatever, as far as having EQs and then saving it to the microphone and having it that way. Um, as far as like doing it on board or whatever, cause that's good. And there's not an XLR interface out there that has a two mic setup, which I kind of wish the Beacon Studio had that. Again, two mics from setups or whatever for two XLR microphones, and then allowing you to separate the microphones inside the software and be able to mute them individually. Now, I'm pretty sure this could just be a firmware update or an option or something like that, like inside the of the Beacon Studio, just mute the Beacon Studio mic, not mute the whole, you know, mix create tab or wherever. That would be the wave uh, if I say if there needs to be any other innovation other than adding third party VST support. I, I don't see it being that hard, but again, I'm not developing software for them, so it might actually be harder than I'm making it out to be. Um, other than that, 
if I said you had to get one of three of these devices, I would potentially go with just the Beacon Mix Create and that's it. Um, if you really need what the software offers or wherever, as far as tuning a microphone or wherever, and you want a smooth, easy process, and you want something that's going to hold your hand doing it and stuff like that, and you don't mind getting a decent XLR microphone, get the Beacon Studio. I would stay far, far away from the Beacon mic, in my personal opinion, like I said. But overall, all these products are still overpriced. My, my, my verdict still stands. All of them are overpriced. Just from the build quality alone, the Beacon Studio and the Beacon Mix Crate are way, way overpriced. The Beacon mic is the only one that seems to be somewhat premium, but at least the white version is very easy to scuff from what I've seen. It obviously have an open box and used version, but at the same time, the audio quality from it, it's, it's leagues behind the Beacon Studio and it tells me it's the components inside the microphone. And again, it's probably just because I have a used one. I'll give it that. But if you had to get, you know, an audio setup or wherever, and you're wondering, okay, so you, since you're telling me not to get the Beacon mic, should I just get the Beacon Studio and the Beacon Mix Create? I think it's going to be a good combo. I think it will be a good combo. Um, it's just, I can't give you my full recommendation because now I have my hand on it. This has cemented what I've been saying the whole and fucking entire time. The Beacon stuff is vastly overpriced, even more so than Elgato stuff, because at least Elgato stuff, they feel at least a little bit more premium. I don't I don't feel like that cheap. You know what I'm saying? It's still overpriced in functionality and what it can do and stuff like that. And the materials ain't like a million dollars or wherever it's made out of. But if the Beacon Studio materials or wherever I put on a scale of one to ten, it's about a four. Elgato's is probably like a six or a seven as far as like the material and the build quality, in my personal opinion. So, yeah, that's my honest thoughts and opinions of having it for 48 hours. I will see you guys if you're only interested in this in the next like three months or something, and I'll give an update. But overall, software stability is trash, just like I've been saying. I've had 10 times crashing. What the fuck, bro? And then all these prices costing this much. I <laughs> I, like I said, I got money to blow. It's not going to put a dent in my wallet, but I couldn't imagine being somebody who, you know, barely making ends meet or wherever, and they're trying to make smart choices and, and everything when it comes to getting stuff for content creation, because it's a hobby. They want to do it and they see the hype behind this stuff and they go and purchase it and they have to return it. Just like I've been constantly seeing all my comments saying, don't get the stuff, don't do it, squid, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But all these people who are fanboys and, and supporters of this company and all this stuff who've been having great, either they've been fanboys or wherever, or they've had great experiences, keep telling me to get it, to get it, to get it. Well, I finally fucking got it and I am not happy. With that being said, y'all take care. Have a squid tastic day. God bless you, yours and deuces. And remember, this is just my experience. Your experience may vary. You might have had a wonderful time with it. I'm not knocking you. Continue to have a wonderful time with these products. But one thing I think we all can agree on that these products are overpriced. And if you can't agree with that, please don't be a product reviewer because you cannot sit here and tell me that a device that feels like this needs to be $250. Also, I do want to say that I am being respectful. Everybody has their opinions. Some people, like I said before, have had a great time with these products. Not knocking your purchase decisions or wherever, but again, I want to take the pros, the cons, the negatives, and the positives and put them in a video or wherever so people can make an informed decision on their purchase. You can't do that if everybody and their mom is bending over for a company and just deep throating them or wherever in order to sit there and say nothing but positive stuff and totally disregard any negatives like there's nothing existing out there. Everything that's man-made is not perfect. There are going to be things that are going to be frustrations for somebody out there potentially. So you have to make the consumer, the buyer aware of it. And people should not be able to go on YouTube or go anywhere to look in for reviews on a product and see nothing but positives. Everything out there has some type of negative. It has some type of drawback. It's not perfect. So accept the fact that whatever product that you have purchased is not perfect. And there are going to be people who have problems with it. That's fine. You're still having a positive 
you know what I'm saying, experience with the product. So why is it such a problem if somebody had a negative one? Why is it such a problem if somebody is saying a negative thing about something that you like so much? It doesn't make any sense, especially when we're talking about somebody else potentially buying it. They need to know about the potential drawbacks. That's the whole thing of reviewers. That's what they're supposed to be doing, taking viewer feedback, taking their own expenses, experiences, if they have any, as well as taking what other people are saying into account and putting it into a video and giving it out there to the public so somebody who watches it can again make an informed decision based on the pros the cons the negatives people's experiences etc that's what a reviewer is supposed to be doing they don't care about everybody's experience if they only had uh, or opinions or whatever they don't care about that stuff they're just gathering information and putting it as a search they're pretty much like a search engine almost but it's not our job to make people aware of it. Even if I have a glowing review or a glowing sentiment or whatever about a product, I still have to tell you, your experience may vary. Your experience might be bad. Your experience might be good. It's all going to be down to your use case scenario. And when you purchase it, is it going to fulfill your needs as well as there's things that I can account for. There's things that you can account for. We're human. We make mistakes as well. So just, just let it be. Let it go. It's not that serious.